learning target 6.9, I can interpret the heating curve of water. So below is a graph that um, shows ice turning all the way into steam. But throughout this whole process, we're talking about the same thing, H2O, just in three different phases of matter. So it starts off as a solid, and as ice, then it ev uh, melts into water, and then it evaporates into steam. But uh, the whole time, it's still the same substance, H2O. So let's start at the origin, at zero, zero, point A, right here. So point A, we start adding temperature. And I know this because the graph is going up. And on my y-axis, I have temperature. So over a period of time, which is on the x-axis, I am adding temperature. And I get all the way to point B. Okay? What I'm doing in, at that point, throughout that whole, t between A and B, is I am just heating up ice. It's staying ice the whole time, but I'm just heating it up. And there is such a thing as really cold ice and then just regular cold ice. And that's what's happening. But then at point B, something starts to happen. From point B to C, it levels off. What does that mean? Well, if I look over at the y-axis, that means the temperature is not changing because it's a flat line. It's not going up in the y-direction. However, time is still elapsing. So what's going on here is that ice is melting. Ice is melting throughout that point. And then at, at, at point C, it is completely water. Water at zero degrees. And then the water starts to heat up again until I get to point D, where now I have water at 100 degrees Celsius. And we should know what happens to water at 100 degrees Celsius. It starts to boil or evaporate. So between point D and E, I have the exact same thing that it kind of had between points B and C. And that's a phase change, but this time it's evaporation. So water evaporating. Okay. And then the last thing from E to F, I'm just heating up steam because it's in the gas phase. And I forgot one to explain what's happening at one of these points, so let me do that real quick. Between point C and D, what's happening? We're just heating up water. So that was going up the graph, meaning for starting at point A and going to point F. So that's starting with ice and going to water. So I, oopsie. That's starting with ice and going to water. What happens if I just decided to go the other way, meaning starting at point F and going down this way? Would that be any different? It would be the exact opposite is the answer. So let's think. If I start with steam and I start cooling it down from F to E, I'm going to get really essentially cold steam. It's going to be steam at 100 degrees. And as soon as steam reaches 100 degrees, it starts to condense. So the opposite would be water condensing. And that's what's happening there. Okay, and then instead of melting when I get water, it's going to be freezing, going down. Okay? So if I go down, I get condensing and freezing. And if I go up, I get melting and evaporating. So you can see all four phase changes that we've talked about, freezing, melting, condensing, and evaporating, they're all there, and they all are correspond to these flat areas where temperature increases correspond to the these areas. So there's five distinct areas, and it's good to be able to explain what's happening at each of those.
the individual example. Below is the heating curve for water. Describe what is happening between these points. So pause the video, resume when you want to check your answer. Okay, so first we need to we need to go individually and figure out what's happening at each of these points. So between point A and B, that would be right here. What's happening there? Well, if we're going up, we are oops. Heating up ice or cooling ice. It would be the opposite of that. So B and C is our next one. What's happening at B and C? Well, if we remember, since there is no temperature change there, but we are still adding energy, something must be happening. What is happening? It's a phase change. So that phase change is either going to be uh, melting or freezing. It depends which way we're going. It depends if we're adding heat or taking heat away. Again, if we're adding heat, it's melting. If we're taking heat away, it's freezing. So the next one, C and D, what's happening there? Well, since it's going up, I know there's a temperature change, so I must be heating or cooling something, and that's what I'm doing. I'm heating or cooling water. So what's happening at D and E? Again, I got a flat point, meaning no temperature change, but I'm still adding energy, so I have to have a phase change. And what phase change is occurring there? either evaporation which is condensation the other way or condensing I mean that's a little too big so let me just do this And the last one is uh, E and F. I see a temperature change, so I must be heating, which again could be cooling. And then I just got to identify what it is. At this point, it will be steam, even if I'm heating or cooling it. So I have all the points, and I kind of explain what's happening. Remember, a flat line equals a phase change. So a flat line equals a phase change. An upward line, or a sloped line, a temperature change. Okay, and if you want to think about this mathematically, these two things should make sense. Okay, so for a flat line, we're going to use the equation Q oops, equals M times delta H. And we use this one because we're going through a phase change. And a phase change indicates that we need to use the latent heat. Okay, where a sloped line, we're going to be using Q equals M C delta T and we know that because it says temperature change and we have a temperature change in there okay one more quick check is think if you wanted to use this equation for a point like right here well between points D and E there is no temperature change so if you plug in zero for delta T what happens to Q Q is going to be zero, but we are adding heat, so this doesn't make sense. So it doesn't make sense to put zero in there, and that is why they have this equation 
for light and heat.